We've been talking for months, years it seems almost, about Bank M&A. When is it finally going to happen? Well, the day is here. Capital One, the big credit card company, is buying ING's U.S. online bank for $9 billion. Christina Aleshi, our M&A reporter, is here to talk more about it on the deal desk. Christina, we've been waiting. Finally, we've got a deal to talk about. Yeah. So the question is, why is ING, uh, why is Capital One buying these assets? That these is a good deposits? first question. <laughs> So the, the, the answer is essentially two reasons. One is that they're really, <laughs> Dakin Campbell, our colleague, has a story out today that quotes someone saying that this is empire building. So as, as we talked a little bit about, this bumps Capital One from number six, from number seven to number six in terms of deposits on a global basis. Number two is that Capital One is really betting that it could take the $80 billion in deposits and make money where ING couldn't. Now, when you say empire building, it's particularly relevant to Capital One because Richard Fairbank, the guy who runs this company, has been there ever since the beginning and made it through the credit crisis in pretty good shape. Yeah, he did. Now he's on to getting bigger. <laughs> and a lot of other banks were kind of scratching their heads at this deal because if you look at the traditional brick and mortar business that he has, it's less expensive to try and gather more deposits by just going out and trying to tap that customer base that you have in the brick and mortar business. Online customers... Kind of counterintuitive in a way, given all that we've heard about the efficiency of online operations at places like Amazon. It doesn't work that way in retailing. It's more efficient in retailing, right. less so you're saying in banking. Well, yeah, because the online customer really wants a little bit more in terms of interest. Uh, so the, the, There has it, to be a reason, in other words, to go online. Right, exactly. And you're slightly inconvenienced because there's not a local branch that you can hop into and you know ask for additional services. So the online customer demands to be paid a little bit more, and as a result, it's a more expensive, it can be a more expensive funding source. So when you say that people were scratching their heads is that also to say that there wasn't a whole lot of competition for ING Direct? <laughs> Bankers would like you to believe that there was a ton of competition. You know, we heard names reporting the story out. We heard that they were talking to Ally, CIT. But at the end of the day, there were only two real bidders that showed up. That was GE and... Um, Capital One, obviously, and there were some questions about how serious GE was from the very beginning anyway. So it may have ended up in Capital One's hands almost by acclamation. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Also, um, you know, I mean, part of the reason that Fairbanks did this deal is because he plans to take those um, deposits and buy assets. Now, you had... you. You asked me before um, before we came on about you know potential acquisitions for assets, and I think that's where he's heading is to uh, buy loan portfolios. So so he he plans to take that deposit base and make money off of it. I see. Perhaps yet more empire building from Richard Fairbank, the CEO of Capital One, Christina Leshy, our M&A reporter here on the Deal Desk.